Have you ever done a science experiment and wondered what it'd be like if you did it big? I have. <laughs> Bill, and I take your everyday science experiments and do them big. This is Science Max Experiments at Large. Science Max! Electromagnets are magnets you can turn on or off when you want. We build our own electromagnet and see just how powerful we can make it. It held 100 kilograms. Plus ferrofluid, wizards, and I try to get to the North Pole using a compass. Now that I'm here, I realize it's really difficult. All on this episode of Science Max Experiments at Large. Greetings, Science Maximites. My name is Phil, and welcome to Science Max Experiments at Large. At this very moment, half the lab is being held together with the power of electromagnets. A magnet one turning off. <laughs> Electromagnets are a really cool and powerful way to interact with the world. And when I say power, that's because you need power to make them work or not work. <laughs> Magnetism is an invisible force that has to do with the magnetic fields created by magnets that lets them attract things that are metal or each other but electromagnetism is a little different. You see, magnets are magnets all the time. It's because of what they're made out of. Electromagnets are only a magnet when you have an electric current going through them, which means you can turn them on or off. Today, we're gonna be building an electromagnet. Oh, that was, that was the wrong switch. Anyway, like I was saying, today we're gonna be building an electromagnet. You need a bunch of copper wire, a very large nail, or something metal to become your electromagnet, electrical tape, a battery, an on-off switch, wire strippers or a craft knife, and the help of an adult, and finally, something to magnetize, like these paper clips. And remember, all of the steps for this experiment are on the website. To begin, take the copper wire and start at the top of the nail. Leave a little bit of wire sticking out, then carefully start to wrap the wire around the nail. Don't go all the way to the end because you need some metal to turn into the magnet. Instead, when you want to start again, run the wire straight back to the top and start wrapping again in the same direction. And keep wrapping and wrapping until you get to this. Now I've used some electrical tape here, here, and here to hold it all together. Using your wire strippers or a craft knife and the help of an adult, remove the plastic coating from the ends of the wires. Attach these wires to the wires from the on-off switch with electrical tape, or attach them directly to a battery if you don't have an on-off switch. And ta-da, you have an electromagnet with your on-off switch. All you need to do is take the things you're going to magnetize, turn your electromagnet on, and suddenly it becomes a magnet! Pretty amazing! <laughs> and then you can magnetize to your heart's content. But when you're done, don't forget, you want to turn it off. So that's what we're going to do today on Science Max Experiments at Large. We're going to max out the electromagnet. So, where's my lab coat? Oh, there it is. We're gonna see how big we can make an electromagnet. And when I say we, I mean me and an expert. Let's see, oh, Heather from the Ontario Science Center. She knows her way around magnets, so let's see. Uh, yeah, I wonder if she's busy. Well, let's find out. And after we're done, I'll need to come back and clean up the giant mess I made in the lab. I was just wondering if you could help me with something. Are you busy? No, I've got time. i got time. Okay, great, because I'm going to make a giant electromagnet experiment, and I need your help. That sounds like a lot of fun. Okay, great. great. Let's go back to Science Max headquarters. Oh, oh we'll via the portal? Yeah, by the portal. Oh, oh okay. You sure? Uh, uh, yeah. I know you're hesitant, so I want to reassure you, nothing will go wrong. Great, okay. Okay. <laughs> 
Oh, hey, we're here. We're yeah. outside. It's, it's okay. It's no, okay. Don't, no, don't worry about it. No, 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 I think no. definitely. <laughs> You all right? Yeah, I was supposed to come in over there, but I came in over here. Uh, oh well. <laughs> so today, Heather, I want to max out the electromagnet. Turn it on, and it's a magnet. Pretty good. And turn it off, and it stops being a magnet. <laughs> I want to make this uh, into a much bigger maxed out version. All right. So what, what are some of the things we can do to do that? Well, actually, if you have a larger battery, one that has a higher voltage, we can try that for sure. Okay, that so will there, help. Are, there are batteries that are 12 volts. Yes. We could try one of those. Give it a try, I for think sure. those are like bigger, right? Yeah, yeah, bigger, more powerful, absolutely. Now, that's one thing you could do. You mm -hmm. can also increase the number of wraps of our coil here. So, how many times we wrap that wire? Yes, we'll increase that magnetic field, making our magnet stronger. And of course, the nail which is important because that's the thing that, that eventually becomes the magnet, right? Right on, yes. So what I thought we would do is we would start with a bigger nail. Oh. What, right? Yeah. So a uh, larger battery, yes. more voltage, and a lot more wraps of the wire. Right on, and we have more space for that now, which yes. is smart, good job. Great, okay, so uh, we'll get to work. Great. Right. Max Historica. If you've ever seen a compass, you know that the needle points north. That's because a compass needle is a magnet, and it points towards the Earth's magnetic north pole. And I'm using this compass to try to get to the north pole. But it isn't easy. In fact, scientists knew there was such a thing as the North Pole as far back as the 16th century. But no one was able to actually get there on foot until 1927. You'd think it wouldn't be that hard, right? I mean, the needle points you straight there. just follow the needle, right? But now that I'm here, I realize it's really difficult. I mean, the wind is incredible and the snow is intense and, and it's so cold. My hands are, my hands, um, yeah. So, okay, we're not really at the North Pole. We were just sort of recreating uh, that. Um, but still, I salute the brave explorers who tried to make it there in the name of science. And I got a sense of it because the the, the wind from the fan and the, and the, fake, the fake snow was, it, um... Okay, everybody, let's pack it up. I mean, that was, that was, that was pretty good. I just didn't know about that, other, about that other camera. So, back to our main experiment, where Heather and I are building a larger electromagnet. An electromagnet works like this. When an electric current is traveling through a wire, it creates a magnetic field. If you wrap that wire around something ferromagnetic, that's something made out of a metal that is attracted to magnets, like an iron nail, then it becomes a magnet. You can make a magnet stronger by wrapping more wire, which gives more distance for the current to travel, increasing the magnetic field, and you can also increase the strength of the current. Heather and I start with a coil of 30 meters of wire and start wrapping and wrapping, and wrapping. There, the wire is now all done. And remember, if you're doing this at home, do not use a drill unless you have an adult to help you out because drills can be very dangerous. This one goes at a very slow speed, so it was okay. But yes, definitely an adult supervised activity. Then we attach another on-off switch and make some leads that connect to a 12 volt battery. So, more wraps of wire and more current means the electromagnet should be stronger. Okay. So we're gonna try this electromagnet and we're gonna pick up this stuff right here. Great. Ready? You ready? Yeah. Three, Three two, two, one, one go! Is it on? Yeah, yeah. Wow, it really does, you can't tell that it's on, but. No, but bring it closer and. Oh yeah, look at that. Okay, let me turn it off. All right. <laughs> Let's see if this nail can pick up this nail. All right. right. Ready? Ready? Go. Ah, uh, ah, uh, oh. Okay, how about this side? Oh. No. Uh, no. Mm, I don't think it's, we're strong enough. It's not strong enough. I, I think that we need to max this out uh, even more. Even more? Right. Um, so I'm thinking there are a lot of appliances that use electromagnets, meaning it's already set up, it already has tightly wound coils and high voltage, so 
We're in a lab here. Maybe do you have yeah. old uh, appliances around? I have I have parts bins with a whole bunch of stuff. Maybe oh. we could find some electromagnets in those. Let's do it. Okay, great. Yeah. Let's go. Pliers, battery, copper wire. Now, if you've already done the electromagnet experiment, here's another experiment that uses all the same materials, plus these. Ha! Neodymium magnets, some of the strongest magnets you can get. So, here's what you need. A battery, some neodymium magnets the same diameter as your battery, copper wire, and some pliers. So here's what you do. First thing is you put the batteries and the magnets together like that. Then what you want to do is bend the wire so it's touching the top of the battery and goes around the battery and then touches the magnets at the bottom. Here's what that might look like. I say might because you can do any shape you want. I've made a coil here. And if you put it over the battery, you'll see it only touches the very top of the battery and the magnets at the bottom. And if I let it go, it spins. It's a homopolar motor. What happens is the battery sends an electric current through the copper wire, and that turns it into an electromagnet, which is attracted to the magnets at the bottom, and it spins. So, now, let's max it out. Ha-ha! A D-cell battery, which is larger, and, of course, larger neodymium magnets. And you do the same thing. Make a coil that only touches the battery at the top and at the magnet, and... Ha-ha! It spins! Maxed out homopolar motor. But don't worry, this is not the biggest size we're gonna do. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Maxed out homopolar motor! I have 27 D cell batteries, a giant copper tube, and a neodymium magnet. So I'm just gonna, and then we get, get rid of that. Put this down. Okay, so the first thing I do is attach the neodymium magnet to uh, the batteries. And I've got all the batteries taped together here so they'll sort of stand up like, like this. Huh? <laughs> Giant stack of D cell batteries. Okay, now what I do is I take the copper coil. I take the copper coil. Um, I need to get, I need to get. Okay, hold on, hold on. I got this. I just need to get the copper coil in. <laughs> I did it. Okay, so I take the copper and I put it on top of the D-cell batteries like this, and then I let it go. <laughs> let it go. Nope, whoa. Homopolar motor. Okay, so that didn't work, but that's okay. I like it when it doesn't work, because that's science. It's not science if it works perfectly every time. I mean, you, you gotta have some room for improvement. Heather and I built a larger electromagnet, but it still wasn't as powerful as we hoped. So now we're searching for parts that came out of an appliance that are pre-built electromagnets. What about this? I think that'll do the trick. Do you think this is, a, this is, that does look like an electromagnet, huh? It does, yeah. And there's a whole big bunch of, of copper wires coiled, coiled on that. around. So you think we can use this? Yeah, let's try it. Okay, great. We built the next version of the electromagnet. This one already has the copper coils, so it's just a matter of attaching wires and an on-off switch, and attaching all of it to a 12-volt battery. Do you think 12 volts will be enough? Let's find out, I think so. Try that. Once we do, Ooh. it works much oh, better. Oh, no problem at all. Ready? Yep, turn it on. On. Whoa, Whoa. pretty good. <laughs> okay, off. off. Neat. In case it was really strong, I have the next step. Horseshoe! Okay, ready? Oh. Whoa! That's... Here. I can't pull that off. I... Okay, wait, we'll grab this. Okay. Work together. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so that's passed all of our tests. Yeah. This is really strong. Um, is what a way we... to test it further? In order to test how strong our magnet is, it's as easy as seeing how much weight it'll lift. Heather and I find a metal table. All right, Phil, so I brought the electromagnet. Okay. Just put it right here. Yep. 
We add some sandbags for more weight and then attach a scale so we can measure how much weight we're lifting. We use a chain hoist, a simple machine made for lifting heavy things. This one can hold up to 454 kilograms. Wanna turn it on? Ready? Yep. Here we go. You can read on the scale how much weight is being lifted. And that scale is going up. Pounds on this side, kilograms on this side. We keep lifting until... Okay, so how much did it hold? It held 100 kilograms. Oh, that's more than I weigh, which gives me an idea. Come on. This is ferrofluid. It is ferromagnetic, which means it's attracted to magnets. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, it's not that interesting. Well, watch as I put it next to this magnet. Mm. Very interesting. And because it's a liquid, it behaves in very interesting ways. Watch this. Unlike most things ferromagnetic, like paper clips or iron filings, ferrofluid is a liquid, which means it behaves in a unique way. The spikes it creates are following the magnetic field lines of the magnet. You can see the magnetic field in 3D. It's even more impressive when we max it out. This is ferrofluid outside of a glass jar. Now, it's sitting in a pool around this electromagnet. And this is a dial, which I can use to change the voltage of the electromagnet, making the magnet stronger. Watch this. Changing the current going to the spiral in the middle turns it into a magnet. The more current I put in, the stronger that magnet becomes, allowing the ferrofluid to climb the spiral to the top. And remember, even though it looks all spiky, it's still a liquid. I will demonstrate with my plastic spoon. And watch this. When I turn the magnet off, it stops being spiky. Turn it on. Turn it off. Science. Ugh. The Wizard Academy. All you have to do is demonstrate true magic. And you will be granted entry. Well, Fuzzix, who is the next applicant for the Wizard Academy? Overwhelmo. Indeed it is I, Overwhelmo. And prepare to be over... Well, though, would you be flabbergastified if I balanced this coin on its end? Not really, no. But would you be impressed if I was to balance this coin on top of this coin? Possibly. Prepare to be flustered and stupefied. Stupid. Stupid flustered as I balance three coins on their ends on top of this glass. Well, that certainly would seem like magic. Let us see. Okay. No pressure, Overwhelmo. You can do this. And now, I say, a magic word. A magic word! Ha 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 And now, you must let me into your academy. Wait. What's under the cloth? What, what cloth? This cloth, nothing! Oh! Is that a magnet? This? No! The pull of the magnet is what's keeping those coins up. The magnet is just strong enough to keep the coins from falling. No! This is set... set dressing. It's just... <laughs> it was a good trick, but it's science, not magic. Well, yes. And you will see! You will see! I will be back! I, Overwhelmo, will return! And I will do such magic that you will need extra socks because I will knock them off! With my magic, you will need at least two pairs of socks. Maybe three pairs of socks. We can still see you! No, you can't! So back to our main experiment. Heather and I have created a very strong electromagnet that can hold a lot of weight. It held 100 kilograms. Oh. Which gave me an idea. 
All right, you ready? Let's do it. Electromagnets, super max out experiment. We've got... Two electromagnets, one, two. And those are wired to two batteries, which are on my belt, just like this, so that I can carry them around. And we've got a crash mat here because... We need to keep you safe because you're gonna be using these electromagnets to get across this massive beam above us. That's right, I'm gonna stick to this metal beam and go across with the electromagnets, wow. we, we hope. I, I have faith. I, I'm <laughs> glad you do. I've got a helmet for safety, goggles for safety, gloves for safety, but in this case, sometimes a lab coat is more safe and sometimes it's less safe. This time, it will get all caught up, so no, no lab coat. All right, you ready to go? I'm ready, let's do it. Okay. Oh my goodness. What? Okay. Because each of our electromagnets can hold more than my whole body weight, I can use them to cross the beam. When they're on, they stick like, well, magnets. And when I turn them off, they stop being magnets and I can move them along as I go. Now, this is something you should definitely not try at home. Come on, Phil. You're almost there. Ah. <laughs> we did it. Yeah. There you go, Science Max, experiments at large, electromagnets. Woo. You wanna go? No. You sure? I'm positive. Okay, <laughs> I'm going again. Woohoo! Crazy. <sighs> Oh, okay. careful. Don't mess it up, Overwhelmo. Overwhelmo. Send in the next applicant for the Wizard Wizard Academy Academy. Overwhelmo. And now, I say, the magic word. Overwhelmo. I say the magic word. The magic word! Well, that certainly does seem like magic, yep. As I balance that one coin, not two coins. That's a three. 